Step 2. Multiple purification rounds. In the previous step, we considered only a single round of purification. Now we're going to consider what happens when we do multiple uh, rounds of purification, as well as what happens when the state is affected by both X and Z errors. So when this happens, we can write our state in the following form. We've got our ideal uh, Bell state phi plus with some fidelity fi, and then we've got three more terms. Each term represents what happens when it, the state is affected by x error, z error, or both x and z errors. And these uh, uh, states are weighted by their probabilities fx, fz, and fxz. And we're going to apply our x error detection circuit as we saw in the previous step. And let's see what happens. How does the state change after one application of uh, this purification circuit? In particular, we want to compute the new fi, fx, fz, and fxz. And the channel that we're going to uh, consider is a depolarizing channel. This means that the probability of the errors for x, z, or both errors is fixed to be the same. Just to simplify our calculation a little bit. So our initial noisy state is given by the following. We've got the fidelity with our bell pair over here given by f, and then each error can occur with probability 1 minus f over 3. And this particular state has its own special name called a Werner state. Now, the, if we go through the calculation of uh, computing the probability of success, that our um, measurements in the z-basis on the second uh, bell pair uh, are going to give uh, even parity, meaning that they will both agree uh, um, on their measurement outcomes, then it's given by this expression in terms of the initial fidelity of our noisy state. And the post-purification state can be written with the following uh, probabilities. The probability of no error is given by this expression up here, the probability of x error, or x and z error, is given by the same expression. But the z error is given by the following expression. This is quite interesting. If we look at the x and xz uh, error probability, then we see that uh, they both depend on this factor, 1 minus initial fidelity f whole thing squared. And quite often we are uh, trying to distribute um, states with high base uh, fidelity f, meaning that 1 minus f will be quite small. So when we square it, it will get even smaller. In other words, x and z errors should get suppressed. But that's not the case for the z error probability. As you can see, the expressions are different. Here we only have a linear term, 1 minus f, not a quadratic term, and it's multiplied by um, the base fidelity f. So as we said, x and xz errors are going to get suppressed, but the z error might actually get amplified. So in order to see this more clearly, let's consider a particular example, where we're going to start with a noisy uh, bell pair of fidelity f equals 0.7. So this is the initial distribution of uh, our probabilities. Probability of no error, basically the fidelity of our initial state, is given by 0.7 and probabilities of x, xz, and z errors are given by 0.1. They are equal, because we are considering the initial state to be a Werner state. After a round of uh, applying our x purification, we get the following. Our new fidelity increases, which is good, as we would expect from a purification. The x and xz errors, they get suppressed. They become lower than their initial value. On the other hand, as we discussed on the previous slide, the z error gets amplified, it increases. So let's keep going with another round of purification. After two rounds, we see that the x and xz errors are almost, their probabilities are almost uh, vanishing, they're almost zero. On the other hand, the z error gets amplified even more, and that results in our fidelity of our state after two purification rounds actually dropping below our initial fidelity. So let's keep going with our purification scheme and let's do 10 rounds. After 10 rounds you can see that again x and x zeros are vanishing but the fidelity is the same as the probability of a zero. They're both equal to a half. 
So after many rounds of purification, the fidelity of the state actually tends to be 0 0.5. And this uh, is less than what we started, for, started with, which is not very good. So what did go wrong? The problem is that by only running the X purification circuit, we are suppressing the X Z errors, but we are amplifying the Z error. So how do we um, take care of this problem? We can alternate the X and Z purifications. We saw in the previous step that the Z purification circuit is a little bit different and it's supposed to detect Z errors. So this time, one round is going to be X purification followed by Z purification. Let's see what happens. Again, we're starting with the same state, a Werner state with initial fidelity of 0 0.7. Then we're going to run one round of X and Z purifications. And what we're seeing is that X error is suppressed, X Z error is suppressed, as well as Z error is, uh, is suppressed, leading to a nice boost in the fidelity of our uh, post purification state. So let's repeat this round of X and Z purifications again. And we see that all the errors are suppressed even further, therefore giving us a boost in the fidelity of the state after two purification rounds. So let's see what happens when we run uh, this scheme 10, uh, 10 times, and we see that the errors are virtually non-existent, and we get a nice pure, uh, pure um, bell pair and the fidelity goes to one, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now, so we can tell that the purification works, but the question is at what cost? And we're going to look at this question in the next step. See you there.